basic reason that we should think very seriously about nuclear power is because of the structure of matter itself. Matter is composed of a nucleus of very dense materials, protons and neutrons, and then these very, very small electrons that orbit the nucleus like planets orbiting the sun. All of the energy, with very few exceptions, that we use on Earth today is based on rearranging these electrons in orbit around the atom. That's called chemical energy. It's the basis of our combustion, digestion, many other processes. And there's a fair amount of energy that can be gained that way. But if you examine using the energy in the nucleus, changing the structure of the nucleus, rearranging the particles in the nucleus, there's far, far more energy that can be extracted in that way. And that's what's called nuclear energy, the energy of the nucleus rather than the energy of the electrons, the chemical energy. This is the power of the universe. This is how stars shine. This is how the internal heat of the Earth is generated, is this nuclear energy, be it fission, fusion, nuclear decay. It's all based on a release of energy from the nucleus of the atom. And the difference in power generation between nuclear energy and chemical energy is so vast. It's not only a million to one, it's even more than that. And this is the basic reason why we can look at a nuclear fuel like uranium or thorium and we can talk about how we can extract so much more energy out of that nuclear fuel than we could out of coal or gas or biomass or petroleum. It's because you're accessing the energy of the nucleus, the energy source of the stars. So why does nuclear power struggle in the commercial marketplace now versus chemical forms of energy? It seems like if there was a form of energy that was a million times more energy dense than what we have today, that it would easily surpass all other forms of energy. And indeed, there's people like me that think ultimately nuclear power will be the dominant form of energy in the world. But I think a lot of that has to do with how nuclear power was originally developed and how we've chosen one form of nuclear energy, pressurized water in uranium oxide fuel as the path we've taken, the so-called light water reactor. Those machines are expensive and they're complicated. And the reason they were developed was probably not because they were the most economic or the simplest or the safest, but because they were the most expedient at that time. Now, with thorium and with the liquid fluoride thorium reactor, we have the potential to go back and create a form of nuclear energy that has the potential to be far more cost effective relative to existing forms of energy than the kind of nuclear power we have today based on uranium and the light water reactor. I think a lot of the reason why nuclear power has suffered in the marketplace is because people have a tremendous fear of radiation. They think radiation is something that is new and unique to the use of nuclear energy. It was something that was so innocuous and unimportant that for thousands and thousands of years people went along their lives not realizing that they were being bathed in natural levels of radiation. But when nuclear power was discovered, suddenly there was the ability to make radioactive sources that were far, far more intense than anything you would encounter naturally. And I think that had part of the reason to do with why people began to develop a fear of radiation and also a fear of what nuclear power could do to them in the event of an accident. Because a nuclear power plant does contain in a very small volume far more radioactivity than we encounter from natural sources on Earth. And in the event of an accident, it's very important to make sure that the exposure of the public to this radiation is absolutely minimized because certainly it is possible to be harmed by radiation from a nuclear accident. Nevertheless, the amount of fear and concern and worry and even terror that societies experience because of their fear of radiation and their fear of nuclear power, I believe is really disproportionate to the actual threat. And now we're seeing situations where whole countries are swearing off nuclear power because of a fear of radiation or a fear of accidents, and ironically exposing themselves to more radiation and to more pollution by the enhanced use of fossil fuels. This doesn't make sense. This is not a logical course of action for an advanced society to take. And sometimes in my mind, I liken it to the fears of witchcraft that societies underwent hundreds and hundreds of years ago, 
where because people couldn't prove that they weren't a danger or a risk, they were killed or ostracized. In a sense, I think radiation is a witchcraft type fear today. People don't appreciate the levels of radiation that they're exposed to from nuclear power plants and how small they are in comparison to natural levels of radiation that they're experiencing anyway just by going about their normal lives. They think that radiation is something that wasn't here and now is here because of the existence of nuclear power. This is something that can only be mitigated through education, through explaining to people the nature of radiation, different forms of radiation, how radiation is naturally present, and how it can be protected against from intensely radioactive sources like a nuclear power plant. And that's something that is tough to do. It's easy to scare people about radiation. It's harder to explain the facts to them and to put risks in perspective.